Sports Network. Welcome to Soccer Town, USA. Rochester, New York, Frontier Field tonight. Exciting A-League action between the Rochester Raging Rhinos and the Toronto Lynx. And welcome. We're glad to have you with us. I'm Don Stevens and alongside Don Lauka to bring you all the action tonight between the Rhinos and the Lynx. And uh, really the storyline tonight is for the Raging Rhinos trying to set a new league record of 11, 11 consecutive wins. Now last year the record was set by the Toronto Lynx at 10 straight victories and it's kind of ironic that the team here to try and stop the Rhinos tonight is the Toronto Lynx. It's not going to be easy for the Rhinos as they do have some injury problems. Mostly up front, the forwards not playing tonight include Darren Tilly and Doug Miller. Top two uh, scorers for the Rhinos. Actually second in scoring, Yari Alm, that was questionable for this one, but it looks like he'll be in and ready to play. Leading the way for the Toronto Lynx tonight is Nikolai Vinjevic. The Yugoslavian played for the Raging Rhinos last year. So he had seven points so far with Toronto and eight points in 21 games with Rochester last year. So Vinjevic leading the Toronto Lynx. You look at the standings right now in the Northeast Division. And Rochester on top, actually first overall in the A-League with 30 points. Montreal second, followed by Long Island, Worcester, and Toronto at the moment. Fifth spot in the division with 12 points. So tonight, it's the Raging Rhinos and the Toronto Lynx. And as you look at it, Don Lauka, how does this match uh, this uh, match set up tonight? Uh, well, as you alluded to earlier, it's that 11-game win streak. It's going to be exciting as heck. Uh, Rochester, especially against the team that had set it, Anstead being in goal for them previously, uh, an unbelievable point two against goal average. That is unheard of in soccer, Don. I'm telling you, I've been in soccer all my life, never seen anybody keeper, defense, whatever, had point two against. That is just fantastic. And we'll be talking to that goalkeeper in just a moment as we continue stay around a lot more to come your way tonight the house is packed here at frontier field and you're watching the raging rhinos on the empire sports network a day, seven days a week, in 156 countries, sometimes against all odds. The game goes on. Umbro, only soccer since 1924. The deck was the most satisfying job we can remember doing. Most everyone loves building decks. We'll show you how easy it is. The pressure-treated lumber Chase Pitkin carries, top quality. We help you plan your deck, show you how to set posts, or we'll install it for you. They even showed us how to angle the nail so it pulls the decking tight. The right lumber, the right brackets, galvanized nails. Doing it yourself doesn't mean doing it alone. Chase Pitkin, you don't have to do it yourself. It was fast, 32 pages a minute. This printer collated, sorted, and stapled like a copier. Even had a name worthy of a copier. And starting at just $2,900, it made all the other printers very, very sad. That's the story of the Xerox DocuPrint N32, the printer that thinks it's a copier. The document company, Xerox. 
from the Carrier Dome. It's the 1998 Syracuse football season. Barring Donovan McNabb as the daring debonair quarterback. Evan Johnson and Quinton Splatwood as the wily wide receivers. Rob Conrad as the bruising fullback. Featuring the marvelous McIntosh brothers. With Jason Coles in the punishing D. And the most formidable list of guest stars in years. All now for tickets before it's too late. Because this is the season you've been waiting for. Hi, I'm Bill Trout. Are you tired of all the hype from car dealers? We think the buying public is too smart for that. At Bill Trout Lincoln Mercury, we will give you the best price, the best trade allowance, and the best service. So just give us a try. Just ask someone who has. Our people do make the difference. The Bill Trout Difference on Routes 5 and 20 in Seneca Falls. As they say, We are the people who make the difference. game we have an opportunity here about an hour before the game actually to talk with the goalkeeper for the raging rhinos and pat onstad has made just tremendous numbers and in inroads this year and, and what a great year for you pat you must be having a, an outstanding time huh yeah i am having a great time you know things are going uh, well for us right now uh, 10 and 0 and uh, eight shutouts uh, but I, I don't think you know take all the credit i think the guys in the back have played fantastic all season and uh, all over the field the guys have uh, dedicated themselves to the team defense and it's worked out fantastic so far well, what about the nerves are you nervous at all a little nervous tonight i got my parents coming in so but uh, generally speaking no I don't get that nervous out there I think I'm uh, been around for enough years that uh, nowadays that I just uh, go out there and do my stuff and so far it's worked out you're playing against your former team the Toronto Lynx uh, the record on the line uh, some personal in incentives and personal records for you uh, which is most important to you uh, I think what's most important to me is that we get another win under our belts uh, it's important for us to stay on top and to keep uh, focused uh, we've got off to a tremendous start but uh, as I say you know we've got to keep working hard each game uh, Toronto will be a great team defensively it'll be a tough team to score against but I think uh, in the end we can win it how long can this thing go on like this Oh, I don't know. I, I mean, I, we take a game at a time, and that's been the best thing about uh, these guys back here is that we focus uh, each half, uh, each 15-minute each break. We just kind of think about it and go, okay, what are we going to do back there to get the win? And, uh, we, you know, like I said before, you know, we're 10-0. and 0. It's a fantastic start. It's nothing that uh, any of us ever dreamed of. Pat, great job so far, and uh, good luck the rest of the way, huh? Thank you very much. Pat Onstad, goalkeeper for the Rochester Raging Rhinos, and we'll see him in that just in a, in a few moments. Uh, stick to us as the game about to get underway tonight from Frontier Field, and you're watching Rhinos. No soccer on the Empire Sports Network. Are you ready for two hours of non-stop action, world-class skill, and undeniable energy? Then you're ready for Rochester Raging Rhino Soccer. It's hot, it's exciting, and it kicks. Prepare yourself for heart-pounding, aggressive action. It's Rochester Raging Rhino Soccer. Get your Rhinos tickets today at the Frontier Field Box Office or call 454-KICK for more information. That's 454-K-I-C-K. -K. Come see why Rochester is known as Soccer Town USA. Where can you find the largest selection of soccer and lacrosse gear? Score! Specialty sports. You'll find shoes, shin guards, socks, balls, and goalkeeper equipment. Featuring such brands as Adidas, Diodora, Brine, Calme, Sandico, and Roy. We also have a complete line of World Cup and MLS apparel. Where? Score! Specialty sports at 8216 Transit Road next to Kmart. Check out our website at www.scorespecialty.com. Score! Your most reliable team dealer. Do you really enjoy buying a new car? Didn't think so. That's why at Island Chevrolet, we think it's time for a change. No hype, no gimmicks. Just the best products and best service. We sell new Chevrolet cars and trucks and GM certified used vehicles so you can buy with confidence. We know how to sell cars and take care of our customers. When it comes to price, service, getting what you really want, it's time for a change. Island Chevrolet. Sabres season tickets, 855-4444. Hi, Soccer Sam. Welcome to Salvatore's. I hear you guys got the best subs in town. We bake our own Italian bread 
twice daily in our air deck ovens. We use the freshest produce available, the highest quality meats and cheeses. We have a variety of 10 cold subs and 15 hot subs in three different sizes. We deliver to homes, factories, schools, and offices. Suburbs! Wow, $5 pizza and the best subs in town. Thanks for trying our homemade Italian subs. Fast Feet Soccer Camps, clinics, leagues, and instruction. If you want game, then boss that ball with Fast Feet. Call 586-0912. That's 586-0912. Looking for adventure, fun, friends, and beautiful scenery? Cycle the American Lung Association's 10th Annual Wine Country Bike Tour, June 26th through the 28th. Register today. The money you raise will help the many programs and services of the American Lung Association. Sponsored in part by Klein Steel, Time Warner Communications, and these other fine sponsors. He stands at 6'4", a pretty big young man, the goalkeeper for the Toronto Lynx, coming in with a 3-4 and four record on the season and a 1-2.12 uh, goals against average. And there's the rest of the starters for Toronto and Pat Onstead, who is having one tremendous year for the Raging Rhinos. And Pat coming in with a record of 10 wins, no losses, and an incredible 0.20 goals against average. And you see the remaining starters for the Raging Rhinos. Up front, starting out for the Rhinos, Lennon Steenkamp, and along with Jimmy Glenn, who's just returned from Columbus of the MLS, and we are underway with this match from Frontier Field in Rochester. It's settled there by Scott Schweitzer, a sweeper for the Rhinos. It hits over the uh, head of Steenkamp. At midfield is chased after by all that but can't get to it. Now taken by Hardy to Schweitzer and stolen away by Giamara. The Lynx on the attack. Crossing in front, Vinovic tries to deflect the ball away, but then it's played away now. And picked up again by the Lynx in the far wing. It's Holness. Holness looking around. He'll uh, feed it to Vinovic. One touch pass, giving it off to Ashton. And now intercepted. Lakai leaves it there for Steenkamp. And the Rhinos have the ball. Long feed downfield. Dan Glenn not able to get to it. Settled at midfield by Tanner. This is Craig Demon. Pass off to Mauro De Silva, who returns after missing the last two games with a leg injury. Ahead for Glenn, but he's pushed off the ball. And then picked up again by the Rhinos. Walton, pulled from behind by Holmes. Pass was behind De Silva, who had moved up on the run. And right from the start, we're starting to see uh, the overlapping runs by Mauro De Silva. And this is what Rochester uh, is noted for. Coming up that right flank, that great Brazilian. Uh, tremendous, tremendous offensive pop firepower from him. As it picks up again, this is Golan and to the middle for Vinovich, who again played in Rochester a year ago. His feed forward to the rookie Ashton. After it is Tanner, but there's a ball now loose in the middle for Thomas. Sneaks through, takes a shot, puts it over top. Oh, great opportunity for the Lynx as Elvis Thomas puts it over the crossbar. And Rochester really dodged a bullet right there. Uh, that could have very easily been the back of the net as Elvis Thomas broke through. Elvis, a great player, uh, All-American at Hartford a couple of years ago, just broke through there and just shot it high. Rhinos are missing their two forwards. Their team leader in scoring, Doug Miller, who led the league a year ago. And also Darren Tilly, the other forward, is out of the lineup, both injured. Gary on that. The uh, second leading scorer for the Rhinos was questionable, but he is in the lineup tonight. Now play at midfield, and after it, taken there by Serentopoulos. Of uh, the Lynx, dropping it back. Holmes, as they move it across the defensive wall. Titus lets it roll, and now sent downfield by Spadafina, who actually leads the Lynx in goals this year with three. Here's Schweitzer. All-star selection this year in the A-League. A hit for Glenn, but he's pushed off the ball. And it's cracked in wide, and out over the end line by Holmes. So it'll be a goal kick for the Rhinos. Goal kick coming up. That Armstead has eight shutouts on the season. Eight shutouts. What a great year he's having. Places the ball, and again, we talk about that incredible 0.20 goals against average. Cross midfield, headed for by Glenn. Titus settles it there for the Lynx. Chasing after it, Tanner, but Titus with a pass off for Holness. Cross midfield, beating it to Vinovich. Give and go is behind Holness. Through midfield once again, it's picked up by Titus. Rick Titus out of Mississauga, Ontario. Quite a few of these uh, 
players on this Toronto team are from the Toronto area, actually. Now feet into the middle and is picked up right away by uh, Spadafina. As he turns, trying to get away from Tanner, can't do it. And Titus, Titus recovers the ball. It's again for the Lynx. Hey, Golan. Well, right now, it's, it's just kind of in a feeling out stage. It's a couple of boxers going at it, trying to uh, get a little jab in here, jab in there, trying to see where the weaknesses are. Both teams, kind of, again, a feeling out stage. Hardy to Glenn. Oh, Walton has the Rhinos moving across midfield, but intercepted and taken away by the Lynx. Pass upfield. It's picked up again. Schweitzer. Chip shot upfield. The overlapping run by Hardy for the Rhinos as he turns trying to get away from Serentopoulos. And the ball knocked away and carried off by Tamara of the Toronto Lynx. And uh, now we're talking about it. Toronto in the white uniforms and the Rhinos in their dark green uniforms here this evening. Toronto Lynx and the not just a raging Rhinos, the first of three meetings this year between these two teams. And it's one of these, you know, Don, every time Rochester plays Toronto, oh, here we go, we got a break going. Once again, it's Thomas, and Schweitzer are getting back close, and he goes down. And so it'll be a uh, free kick for the Lynx, Thomas. What I was starting to say, Don, is that every time Toronto plays Rochester, you can almost throw out the record book, because Toronto just, no matter what Rochester has, they're really up for this game, maybe because of the closeness, uh, the rivalry there, but they just seem to take it to Rochester and give Rochester a very, very difficult game. This is a corner kick for the Toronto Lynx. It's Vinovich, right-footed kicker, an outswinger, and high in the box, headed back into the middle, and the loose ball is blocked aside by De Silva. Walton was taken down in the box, and so the whistle to stop play. Free kick for the Rhinos. And Rochester is very strong in the back right now. Last year they had some problems in the air, but this year with uh, the, the Demon back there and uh, Malai Walton coming back to help out, and Yari and Lennon Steenkamp in midfielders, they're very rarely going to get beaten in the air. Tim Hardy received a red card last game. Actually, he has to sit out the game on Sunday. California plays here at Frontier Field. Has a red card taken last Sunday against Montreal. Todd Schweitzer, one of the four members of the Rhinos this season to make the A-League All-Star team. The Yogi McKay cross midfield on that, flicks it forward, and the ball is through. And that's just Holmes playing the back of his hand for Crosby. Crosby, 6'4", 195 pounds. He's got some good size. Well, uh, Pat Hunstead is not exactly a, a, a tiny guy either. That's the big thing, it seems like, in soccer these days, is the big goalie is uh, is the thing to have. Exactly. You're seeing that even in the World Cup. You're seeing a lot of goalkeepers watching a game today. Paraguay playing in uh, Chula Verde. Great goalkeeper. Great size. You know, it's just the athletes are getting bigger and stronger. Yeah, it's Yogi Mikai who's sporting his new hairdo here today. Or a lack of. One hopper into Busby is grabbed, and the uh, ball brought away now by the Toronto Lynx. It's Titus. Works his way. Cross midfield into Rhino territory, and now and the uh, Lynx trying to get the attack going. Back in the middle for Ashton, tries the uh, wing to Jamara. She turns back and looks it over. Jamara crossing ball inside the box is knocked down. Walton up with it, feeds, feeds it to Hardy, drops it back to Mackay. As the Rhinos now will send the ball across midfield. Steve Gamp up there by Holmes. Loose ball at midfield line. And it's taken by the Lynx. Sharon Tobolus drops it all the way back to his keeper. No score, just getting underway. You can see, played about uh, seven minutes so far in this match. Cross midfield. Flick forward by Thomas, but one bounce into Onstad. And the Rhinos control. Looks like a packed house here at Frontier Field again tonight, Doc. Huh? Yeah, it's a great, great atmosphere for a game, and it's a perfect time to get that record, I guess. There's a long shot in wide by Thomas, and it looks like he's the one to watch. Elvis Thomas has two shots, and one was a great opportunity. Yeah, and I see Pat Erkley right there is uh, kind of looking, what the heck's going on out there? Why are we giving uh, Elvis Thomas those, uh, those shots out there? See the coach? By the way, also has to sit out Sunday for receiving a, you know, a red card uh, in Montreal. That's right. Maybe he'll be up here giving us some commentary. Now. That's right. Now it's brought away across midfield. Schweitzer. As he looks it over, feeds it in the middle. Tanner dropping it back. Malai Walton with the ball there. Pass off to Tim Hardy. Left foot a kick. He lost his footing. And the ball now upfield. One-on-one. -on -one. Thomas. Hammond getting back. And Schweitzer back to help out. The wide side is Vinovich, and there's the pass to Nikolai Vinovich. Moving in, takes a shot, blocked away. And so Coleman got a piece of it. It was the fourth of the Armstrong and the old time. That's 
tell you, that was a great chance. Elvis Thomas uh, putting a long ball, changing point of direction, and Nicky Vinovich taking it all alone. And uh, Craig Demon did very well there just to get to it. Oh! Almost through, but Busby up with the ball, and that was Jimmy Glenn right on the doorstep. Yeah, a quick counterattack. Uh, didn't waste any time. Got the ball up quickly, and Jimmy Glenn was knocking at the door up there. Hardy is knocked down, and there's a foul, so a free kick at the midfield line. By the Rhinos, Golan taking that foul. Ralph Golan, originally from Poland. At the midfield line, it'll be Scott Schweitzer. The uh, keeper, Pat Onstad, Scott Schweitzer, Gary Onnett, and Doug Miller, four members of the Rhinos, selected to this year's A-League All-Star team. And probably a couple others that should have been on there as well. Uh, for example, I know you and I agree that Craig Demon, it's unbelievable. Oh, it's He's just, done an All-Star. Exactly. I was, I, was, I was stunned that he didn't make the All-Star team. It's Tanner, the captain of the Rhinos. As he's watched by Vinovich, down uh, gets the ball through and a give and go from De Silva back to De Silva on the attack toward the crossing ball, but there's knocked out over the end line. And the indication is a goal kick, and down on the field is Franco Spadafina. And we see Myro De Silva there uh, kind of looking because uh, he thought it was off the defender. Uh, but Mauro is really making a lot of good runs up that flank, and uh, he makes those uh, overlapping runs a la Cafu, the great Brazilian uh, right back. And there we have it right in the replay. Tommy Tanner breaking in, and there's, there's Mauro De Silva picking up the ball and just got blocked out. And I think he caught a cleat at the end of it, too, but I'm pretty sure that he uh, uh, was sure that he had a corner kick out of that. So Spanafina is still down on the field. He's originally from Toronto, the 26-year-old. And there you look at Mario De Silva, who missed the last two games with a leg injury. Back in the lineup here today, Spanafina, who's a defender, leads Toronto in scoring so far this season, has three goals. I know, that's quite shocking. Uh, Mario De Silva, though, I'll tell you, he's, he, it's, it's a tradition in Brazil that they have those attacking marking backs. This year, they have Cafu in the World Cup on the right and Roberto Carlos on the left. And going back for generations, they've had that. And he's right from that mold. Headed back across midfield by Demon, but Titus settles the ball for the Lynx and feeding it into Vinovich, who is dumped. Play goes on. Taken by Demon. Throws it off to Tanner. His pass back in the midfield circle is kicked away and now here by Ashton. Way up in the stand. So the throw in for the Rhinos. And Nikola Vinovich, I see he's gotten already a couple of uh, sticks from guys from Rochester. They know him from last season. And the knock on Nicky was that he doesn't like uh, getting stuck in. So they're, they're going to play him physically. Outfield to Silva. Thomas chasing him and gives to Silva a tug. And this will be a foul and a free kick for the Rhinos. Turns and throws the uh, ball out of the stands. He should have received a card for that. Oh, no, exactly. He was very, very close to getting a card on that. In the midfield circle, Ali Walton dropping the ball back to his defender, Schweitzer, to Craig Demon. Cross midfield and Steenkamp trying to play a one touch pass off, but that's intercepted by Holness, and now Steenkamp takes it back. But there's a reason why he's called it a foul as he took Holness down. And you see Peter Pinizato, the coach of the Toronto Lynx. Yeah, he himself, Peter Pinizato, was a great player in his day. He had played a little bit in Switzerland, and then he came over to play in Toronto for Toronto Italia. So the, that man has a lot of, lot of soccer knowledge and has been around a lot. Steenkamp dropping the ball back to Hardy. Steenkamp moved up to the forward position along with Jimmy Glenn, who has just returned today from Columbus of the MLS, been on loan from the Rhinos to Columbus. Well, he returns today. Steen Camp moved up front with the injuries to Aaron Tilly and Doug Miller. Now Busby kicking it across midfield. Hardy pops that one up in the air. It's headed by Chiamara, then off the chest of Hardy. As he turns, it'll be kept in play by Mackay. Yogi Mackay leading it forward to Yari Alna. Back to Yogi Mackay. She's watched by Giamara. Sends it up to the midfield uh, line. And that's blocked away and out. Off of Hardy. So the ball will be taken on the throw in by the Lynx. And the thing you're noticing here is why Rochester has such a uh, such such so few goals scored against them is you're seeing the interchange. Look at you got Hardy up and right away Yogi Mackay dropping back into the slide. Good team concept of defense. However, Toronto has really had the better of the opportunity so far in this one. Tommy Tanner at midfield, rolling it through. Through ball to Alna, moving up along with Glenn, takes a left foot, a kick block to Ray. Glenn stops, picks it up, looking for the crossing ball, that's blocked, and then kicked away and out by uh, Spadavina. Now, wait a minute, by uh, Serentopoulos. Gary Allnut showed 
why he's that valuable a player because as a midfielder he can come in and attack he can take shots and goal he'll come back and defend he's what I call a complete all-around player as you look at the replay and there we have it Yari all not breaking through and just getting a good crack on that ball and uh, it just it went deflected off a defender off the corner kick an opportunity for Steen camp couldn't get a hold of it and a keeper Busby up with the ball so that's the first corner of the match for the raging rhinos and remember the kickstart your digital communication needs called DICOM or the DICOM has the uh, ball now his plate away up to midfield and that's uh, taken by Tanner dropping it back all that at the midfield line sends it across midfield deep from the corner goes Tanner and yeah, he's taken down oh, he's out. Tanner saying hey what's the call here Einstein saying no the ball belonging to Toronto yeah I think what Tommy's saying is that he got taken down that's uh, actually a tackle from what the tackle from behind is what FIFA here we go. Here we see it again. Yes, definitely a tackle from behind. As a matter of fact, yesterday in the World Cup, there were three cards issued. We get red, three red cards issued for tackles from behind. And this wasn't even called a foul. All out again. Another throw in. No score. Almost 15 minutes played. And the Lynx so far leading in the offensive categories in shots. And now it'll be played by Holness back to his keeper, Busby, and he'll just uh, drive it across midfield. Off of Demon to Schweitzer. On the wing now to Mauro De Silva, the Brazilian. Out to the midfield line for Tanner. Right back to De Silva, pops it up across midfield, and Steenkamp has a player on his back and can't get up. Right away by Vinovich. His pass intercepted. Nice uh, play and getting back by Kali Walton. Pops it all the way back to his keeper, Pat Onstead. No score. This is the 11th match of the season for the Rhinos, the 10th of the year for Toronto. Links with one game in hand on the Rhinos. De Silva moves it forward. Through to Steen Camp. Turns it back to the middle for Glenn as he's bumped. Comes up with the ball, then he's dumped. And a foul free kick for the Rhinos from about the 30, 20, 34 yards out. Camp from here. He's got a howitzer for a right leg, so he might even just take a crack right on goal from here. Backs up. A couple of miles. <laughs> Gonna get a good run of this one. Yeah, he's on, what, 15, 20 yards back. I don't know, maybe, back. maybe that's where he gets his power from. I don't know. There's a small wall at the Toronto 18. Here comes Dean Camp, right foot, a kicker roller along the ground. Through, but Glenn couldn't reach it. So it goes by. Still no score. And we'll see the keeper, uh, Busby, with the kick. And at this point, one of the things that uh, I'm noticing on Toronto, what they're doing is when Rochester is starting to attack, Toronto seems to drop back a little bit of kind of a prevent defense. And they're looking for that quick counterattack, either to break uh, Vinovich or Elvis Thomas up top. So it's definitely going to be a counterattack game on Toronto's part. Hardy getting it forward. Then stopped by the Lynx. Toronto settling the ball. The Einzer and Tobolas turns back and plays the ball and back into his own end. Covered there by Holmes. Daryl Holmes, originally from Nelson, New Zealand. Ball taken away by Glenn. He grabs on to Glenn. Still the battle for the ball. And Mackay off of his foot and out, and it'll be a Toronto throw in. Yeah, I didn't even recognize Mackay with that new do he's got over there. There's the throw in to Vinovich. All got away, and then he puts it out, so now the throw in for the Rhinos. Mackay over to take the throw in. And Rochester realizing Vinovich has such good skills at a ball. They're not giving him an inch. There it is. See, the great skill by Mickey Vinovich there. Moves it forward, back to help out as all night. Steals the ball, and he'll drop it to his defender, Craig Demon was the BDSL uh, Defender of the Year last year. Making the step up to the A-League this year. Boy, he has done an outstanding job. All the way downfield, kicked aside by Spadafina. Out to uh, midfield, Vinovich. Three players from the Rhinos all over him, and all taken away. Alton to De Silva, to Tanner, right back to Moro De Silva. In the middle for Walton. Turns to get away from Thomas. Alton dropping the ball back. Schweitzer, or to Tanner. Crosses midfield, Holmes all over him, and Tanner drops it back to Craig Demon. Sun is setting. It's shining a little bit into the face of the Toronto goalkeeper, Busby. Now pass forward to Steenkamp. As he pushes Holmes aside, turns back to the middle. Steenkamp picked up momentarily. 
momentarily still has the ball. As he uh, tries to get away, uh, two white jerseys all over him, no call. Play goes on, and the Lynx bring the ball away. And then down into Manchester uh, territory by Kiyomara. Back to recovery goes Scott Schweitzer. No score still. 19 minutes play. Upfield comes Tommy Tanner. And for all men who had an assist in the last game as the Rhinos victorious in Montreal. One nothing. And here's all that. Hitting him behind. Crossing by the He can't shoot. saved by Busby, but it was a great run by Yari Allnut as he broke into the flank, and then what he did was he cut the ball back to Lennon Steenkamp. Lennon made a good crack. It's a Rhino's Daikon corner kick. The kickstart your digital communication needs called Daikon, and it's Yogi Mackay, left-footed kicker, out swing over the wide side, up in the air, and headed away out of the box. Settled by Tanner, up to the 18, takes a look in the middle, oh, that header, Busby knocks it down, and he's on the ball. Another great opportunity for the Rhinos. And Rochester really putting pressure on Busby there as the ball's being chipped back in and he's getting caught in a position where he's really got to make a lot of tough, uh, tough tays. Here we have that replay on Alda coming in and cutting, cutting the ball back. Yeah, there it is. A great, great kick saved by the keeper. And here again, more pressure coming in on the keeper. And oh, about an inch. I'll not almost put that ball in. Uh, great camera work by our crew here tonight from Empire. And that's just outstanding camera work. Ed Steenkamp with the heel pass, but that's intercepted and brought away. And Dern taken away by Schweitzer, moving up with the play. Sneaks it through to Glenn as he turns to get away from Spada Fina. Gets loose with the ball. Here's Glenn with the shot. Jimmy Glenn as he picked up the ball at the 18, at the top of the 18, looked at it, stayed calm, then beat a defender, took it in, looked again, and the main thing was he had composure. During this whole thing, he had composure as he finally slotted it to the far corner, which is to his left. Just a great piece of work by uh, Jimmy Glenn, showing a lot of poise as he took the ball into the box. Here we have it again as he takes it in here. Now you, you think he's going to crack it. He gets another one. He's out here and then he just puts it into that fire uh, to his left. Great, great composure by Jimmy Glenn. So Glenn getting his first of the season. Slide tackle there as Schweitzer's knocked down, or rather Hardy was knocked down as you see Glenn scoring his first of the season. And I believe that Scott Schweitzer should get an assist. Glenn and his return from Columbus. He really felt uh, felt good. He says he feels a whole lot better right now as, as it was quite an uplifting experience for him to be with the MLS team in Columbus. And he shows it now as he comes through and scores here tonight. And all that down in the attack is right in the middle. They've all blocked away from all that over the end line. And a kick for the Rhinos. And Yari Allnut making one of those patented runs out of his midfield position using his speed. And as a result, he was able to get a corner kick out of the situation. It's a Rhinos Daikon corner kick. The kickstart your digital communication needs called Daikon. There's the uh, corner on the set piece in front. Busby leaping in the air. Picks it off of Jimmy Glenn. Rolls it away, but almost gave the ball away. And then he ran into Allnut. This will stop his play. And so the foul, it'll be a free kick for the Lynx. Yeah, well, what happened there was that as the keeper came out, he kicked the ball, and he actually kicked it into, into uh, uh, Yari Allnut. Here it is. It, it's, oh, Yari did a little sneaky thing. He put his leg out there. We didn't catch that the first time around. He, yeah, he put it in. His, actually, he could get carded for that. I mean, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. That should be a yellow card, actually. Really? Well, that's headed in, and out comes Arnstad. They take it to Thomas, runs into him, and Thomas goes down. Ran into a brick wall right there. Exactly. I wouldn't want to run into Anstead or Craig Demon back there. And if I was Elvis, I'd think twice about uh, doing that. Walton through to Steen Camp. Has the Rhinos on the attack again. Dropped back to Walton. Moving it forward. Sneaks it through to Glenn. One touch pass is behind uh, Steen Camp. And now brought away by Toronto. 1 0 in favor of the Raging Rhinos. 80 degree temperature right at the moment here at Frontier Field. Beautiful night. Turns out to be a gorgeous evening and a great crowd on hand. That blocked away and out of bounds by Mackay. Throw in by Giamara. Giamara almost got caught in that Mackay Hardy sandwich, and I tell you, I wouldn't want to get caught in that sandwich either. As you look at uh, what's happening here right now, partly cloudy, 80 degrees, a little wind northwesterly at 10. Field is uh, great shape. 
Beautiful evening for soccer. Not very many empty seats here at Frontier Field, if any. There's a long shot in. Walked away, punched out by Onsat, and carried off now by Schweitzer. It was Thomas right there for the rebound, but uh, Onsat able to punch it all the way outside the box. And I'll tell you, Rick Titus came up from his defensive position and just cracked it from about 35 yards out. That was one heck of a shot. He caught everybody by surprise, including Onsted, I think. Here come the Rhinos. Tanner to, to uh, De Silva, but that's out. Over the uh, touchline, so it'll be a throw-in now for the Lynx. Moro De Silva, first year with the Rhinos. Nicky Vinovich, who played for the Rhinos a year ago, his second year in the A-League, and that's kicked away and out. Throw-in once again for the Rhinos at midfield. <laughs> there's, a, there's a great indication how nice the weather is. Huh? Oh, that's great. I'd love to be there. Why aren't we up here, Don? Why aren't we over there? Can we broadcast those, from there next time? Did you see those those sunglasses there? Those were great-looking sunglasses, Absolutely. I'm telling you. Now here comes Mackay. A little chip shot hit for all that. Can't get to it as Buzzy leaps in the air. Don, can we ask management if we can do the next broadcast from that hot tub? <laughs> hey, you can ask all you want, I'm sure. <laughs> Busby bringing it forward and now sends it all the way downfield Hardy back heads it back into the middle for Schweitzer moving it upfield getting past the 35 now dropping it back to De Silva he'll roll it forward to Steenkamp at midfield being chased from behind by Titus and Steenkamp drops it back to De Silva Rhino's defensive core has been pretty much intact for the season, except for De Silva being out for a couple of games. Now here's a long kick downfield by Schweitzer, trying to settle the ball as Mackay, but it's off his, his foot and out, and so the Lynx with a throw in. But uh, really, it's been the same four. In fact, you look at Malai Walton, who was a starting defender for the Rhinos last year, and came back after his indoor season was uh, late getting here and found out he couldn't get in the lineup. He had to play in the midfield. Exactly, because you've got, like, the Rock of Gibraltar Denim in the middle, and Schweitzer just works off Denim. It's a great, what I call a complementary duo, where one guy is like that rock, the pillar, and the other guy, quick, just comes in and picks up all the loose balls, scheming, you know, thinking all the time. At midfield... Antopoulos drawing it across into Rhino territory. Davinovich being chased by Alna and feeds it forward to Jamara. Give and go back to Davinovich. Crossing ball through the box and hold this after it. Is he going to get there in time? And is just very able to keep it in bounds. Titus off to Holness. He'll cross it the other way. Jamara over him and out over the end line. So a goal kick here for the Rhinos. 1 0. Rochester leading. Toronto looking to change the point of attack in that play as they went from the left flank trying to get it all the way across to the right, but just uh, got a little too much on it. You know, there's an interesting statistic that Pat Onset pointed out himself, which the uh, crack Rhinos PR department checked out and verified that Pat Onset, his last, uh, when his team scores a goal, he is 21 and 0. When that, his team scores one goal, he has 21 wins and no losses. That is incredible. That is such an incredible statistic that I, I can hardly believe it. He's got a lot of those incredible statistics, but I think the one that's the most important to him tonight is that he have a good game here because his parents are visiting all the way from Vancouver, British Columbia. Well, that's, that's the main thing. Like he said earlier, he said he doesn't care about uh, anything else except the victory. That comes first. Vinovich, right on him is Schweitzer. Vinovich turning and the whistle to stop play. The foul. Free kick. Foul on Schweitzer. And I'll tell you, I think, I think Vinovich bought that call because there was just an incidental contact. But the way Vinovich stopped and looked at the referee, he actually, I think, bought it. He talked the referee into that one. See Tommy Tanner with the captain's armband. Off field. The Lynx on the attack. Dropping it back. Titus to Holness. Running deep in the corner. Demon right on him. Wins the race to the ball. And the ball rolls out over the end line. So a goal kick for the Rhinos. And Denham just kind of shielded the ball to let it run out. And with uh, with his size, I don't think anybody really wants to take him on to try to get him out of the way. Absolutely perfect weather here tonight at Frontier Field. And to Silva chips one across midfield. Holmes runs into Steen Camp and knocks the ball away. There's a battle for to Mackay. Oh, almost got it through. And if he had, it would have been Tim, Tommy Tanner on a breakaway. All however, recovered by the Lynx. Danjevich off to Holness. 
to Vigovich. He sneaks it through, comes out on the other side with the ball and a pass to Ashton. Trying to move by Allman, and now rolls the right foot a kick in wide. Missing the short side of the net and out. And I think what we had was a touch off a of Rochester uh, defender, and it's going to be a corner kick. Or the links, a corner kick. Giamara. for the corner kick. As you see the move here by Vinovich. Yeah, nutmeg, huh? Exactly. Little Mudwood. You know, Nicky Vinovich has that great skill. He has a tremendous, no, no question about his skill. So the corner kick. Left foot a kicker from Gio Mara. Outswinging, and it's uh, flicked away, but there's a crack of the ball from Spadafina. And he puts it up over top of the crossbar, and that gives you a good reason why Spadafina leads the Lynx right now in scoring this season. Yeah, he comes up on all the set pieces, meaning corner kicks, free kicks. He's good in the air. He's strong, and uh, he's got a good hit on a ball. And right there, if, if the ball had been a little lower, it uh, might have been the back of the net. Well, I have it unofficially now. The Rhinos, or rather the Lynx, leading in shots 5-3 to three so far. And again, that's unofficial statistics. That midfield, the Ariana turns back. Off to Schweitzer. Moving forward, sends it through across midfield. Running onto the ball goes Glenn Holmes right on him. Glenn deep now into and near the end line, looking for the crossing ball. Drops it off. He's dumped. No oh, whistle and play goes on. Oh, way offside is Thomas. Offside by about a month and a half. Right. Toronto trying to go for that quick counter again uh, to Thomas and the Rochester defense playing very smartly, stepped up and caught him in the offside trap. Rhinos of the ball. Nikai midfield to Demon. Greg Demon looks it over. He'll send it to the 18. That intercepted. That's blocked away by Spot of Fit by uh, always get those two mixed up. Serentopolis. Again, Thomas way offside. Flag in the air. And just an uh, instant replay of what happened a little while ago. Uh, Thomas broke through. Uh, Rochester sees it. What happens, the defenders, as soon as they see the midfielders making an attempt to pass the ball through, if they step up real quickly, they'll, they'll nine out of ten times, they'll trap the guy in the offside trap. The all-time leading scorer at Hartford University. That was Thomas, and boy, he's got the wheels. Oh, he's got the wheels. He's a very talented player. It's only his second year in the league, and uh, he's going to be a good one. Sarantopoulos, long throw in and getting the head on it was Hardy and then Vinovich flicks it into the middle and Golden will send it off on the wing for Holness. Toronto on the attack, 13 and a half minutes to go here in the first half and the Rhinos with a 1-0 lead. Yes, Sarantopoulos off to Jamara. They'll try it into the box, hand away by Tanner. That's popped up in the air, loose ball at the 18 is taken by Schweitzer. He's a good steam camp. Just a foul and a free kick. Well, the next home game for the Raging Rhinos just a couple of days away. Right here and a great way to celebrate Father's Day. Treat Dad to a Rhinos game. Present the ticket office with a Father's Day card and receive a free ticket for Dad right here on Sunday night against the California Jaguars. There's something I don't understand. I've, I've seen about two, three tackles from behind, and I thought that FIFA had uh, alerted everybody throughout the world, and especially with the World Cup in play, that these are supposed to get, uh, you're supposed to get cards. As I said yesterday in the game, there were three red cards given out from tackles from behind. And here, you know, they're not even getting yellows. So a couple of them haven't even been whistled. What a great job Pat Onset did in keeping the ball from going out over the end line and avoiding the corner kick. Great job by Armstead. You see, as he slid out of bounds, and actually held the ball back in. Yeah, he's 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 such a he's a beating off to Mackay. He'll beat it forward. Here's Jimmy Glenn on the attack. Moving in. No, he overruns the ball. Still has a chance at the end line. Glenn trying to come away, but can't do it. Great opportunity. Nice feed from Mackay. And Glenn being pushed over top of the ball. Couldn't get the shot off. Oh, it was just a great feat from Yogi McKay, and Jimmy Glenn was in, and I think he made one touch too many on it. There was one, pint, uh, one part of that whole sequence where he, when he pushed the ball out, he had a nice crack. There's a throw-in. Long throw-in. It bounced into the net over top of everybody. You know, I was looking at another thing. I totally missed that. But if it's a throw and it doesn't touch anybody yeah, and it, it goes in. It didn't touch anybody. Then it means that it doesn't count as a goal because you cannot score directly off a throw and it does have to touch somebody. Yeah, it was just over top of uh, Steenkamp and Busby as they went up for the ball and it was one bounce into the net. All right, here's Busby. 
Throws it off to Sarantopoulos. Moving right up on the play is Bakai. Head for Holmes. He's bumped by Hardy, and the ball taken back by Hardy, and then rolls out, and it'll be a throw in for the Lynx. Jim Hardy. Dropping the ball back, and Ashton now playing it back to the defender, Spadafina. He'll go cross field. Titus settling the ball, losing his footing momentarily. One to nothing, the Rhinos leading. With uh, ten and a half minutes to go here in the first half. Midfield. Vinovic coming away with the ball. Four green jerseys on him. Gets a pass away to Thomas. Up to Jim and It's offside. That's the third offside for Toronto here in the half. And Rochester's pulling that very well. As I said, uh, the offside is actually called for those of you who aren't uh, sure out there at the time when the ball is passed, not when the player receives the ball. So defenders, when they see the guy striking the ball, if they shoot up quick, that's what we call the offside trap. Devin, just outside of his 18-yard box, being chased by Thomas, and now sends it all the way downfield. Back to come up with the ball, however, getting to it. That's Steve Pan turning around, trying to feed it back in the middle, then goes down, and the loose ball brought away. Nice play by Steen Camp, almost got it away. They'll go long downfield the other way. At the 18, chased down is that Holness all the way now off on the other side of the field. She'll be playing the left wing. Feed through. Spin around by Walton to get away. Pass off to Walnut. Feeds it forward and Tanner running on to the ball. Last midfield trying to punch it through. As he's watched closely, drops it back and they're taken by Walton. He's watched by Ashton. Walton off to De Silva. Titus on him. De Silva head for Tanner. Has Glenn in the middle and on to the other side. Pass through and De Silva couldn't get to it. That's picked up over the hot tub. Almost into the hot tub. Nice combination on that bank flank between Tommy Tanner and De Silva. As De Silva first was faking that he was going to cut on the outside, took it to the inside. They combined very smartly on that and eventually Tommy Tanner pushed it in and uh, De Silva got it off a defender for corner. It's a Rhinos corner kick and DICOM corner kick. The corner kick uh, to kickstart your digital communication needs called DICOM. Boy, the Rhinos, third corner of the match. Yogi Makai out high to all night. Took the shot, blocked away. It was a nice hit by Allnut to take it on a clear volley right out of the air. It's just go here. Inside the box, and roll, and roll, and roll, and roll, goes wide. Just missing wide on the shot by Yuri Allnut. Nicely set up by Tommy Tanner. Oh, and he wishes he had that one back as Tommy Tanner pushed the ball through him, and Yari was all alone and just was trying to find that far corner and missed it by a, by a hair. Here we have it, Tommy Tanner chipping a great little ball, and you see Ar Yari Allnut picking it up and looking for that park corner, and just, oh, as a matter of fact, there was a touch at the end, wasn't it, by a, a, a Toronto player? I missed it, I didn't see that. Now it's headed aside by Schweitzer for Mackay. Rolls it into the midfield area and picked up again by the Toronto Lynx. Ashton trying to get it through to Thomas, but couldn't do it, blocked away by Schweitzer and out, so a throw in for the Lynx. Here's the throw into Vinovich. Chips it forward. Popped up in the air. Thomas in behind. Another offside play. And Thomas is just getting a wee bit too anxious. I mean, he's got good speed. He should hold back a little bit. And uh, he's, he's trying to break ahead of everybody and getting caught in that offside continually. This is Walton off to De Silva. Or to Walton. That drops it right back to De Silva. You know, I always uh, I look at him and, and think about Dougie Miller, all the offsides that he used to get. And uh, occasionally you'd sneak him through the odds say that boy one of these times you're going to get through you know uh, Yeah, that's true But uh, the difference is is that Dougie what he does is he makes a lateral run first what? Uh, uh, what Elvis Thomas is doing is just breaking straight ahead It's easy for defenders to trap him you make that lateral run you, and then you break when the ball's being touched It's very difficult for those defenders to trap you Schweitzer Crossfield to Tanner and the Rhinos now moving forward Rochester leading one nothing and Tanner is bumped with the ball picked up again by Giamara. Links on the attack. Vinovic into the middle for Thomas. As he's watched there by Tanner. Vinovic chips one forward. Intercepted and brought away by Demon. And the Rhinos have the ball. Demon to Mackay. Last midfield. Yogi Mackay has been with the Rhinos from the start. Actually the first player signed by the Rhinos. 
Yeah, local product that agrees Arcadia High School. Uh, son of an uh, ex-professional who played for the Lancers here. So there's a Mackay soccer tradition going way back in Rochester. Thomas takes it away. Rhinos with the ball. Thomas Crossfield to Jamara. Just over six minutes to go in the first half. Jamara watch closely, dropping it back across midfield. And uh, Serentopoulos plays it all the way back to his keeper, Busby. Spadafina for the Lynx. Pass off to Titus. Toronto slowly moving forward. Taking their time here and now bringing it out to midfield. Titus sends across field. Serentopoulos had to get an extra wide jersey to fit that name across the back of his shoulders. <laughs> that was blocked away and out of bounds. Well, you know, it's those Greek names. You know, those Greek names are like... Next game on the Empire right here Wednesday, July 15th with the MLS Stars. Tony Miola, Alexei Lawless, maybe even Billy Andrake coming to Frontier Field for this exhibition uh, friendly. The Rhinos against the Metro Stars of the MLS. Hope you'll join us that night. I was going to say, those, there's only one thing worse than Greek names in Jersey, and that's Ukrainian names. When you have to switch from the Cyrillic alphabet to, to the English alphabet, then it's like 30 letters. <laughs> that dropping it back for Hardy tried to play it up the wing but blocked away by Ashton and that creates the goal kick for the Rhinos what nothing Rochester leading five minutes away from halftime cooling off nicely now this turning out to be a gorgeous evening here at Frontier I still think we should go into that hot tub though Don all right well, you go ahead I'll follow Tanner downfield has it at 18 yards out on the line to uh, Glenn. Now moving through is uh, De Silva. Couldn't gain control. That was deflected out over the end line, and this will create another corner kick for the Rhinos. It is a Rhinos Dicon corner kick. Kickstart your digital communication needs. Call Dicon. And I tell you, Mauro De Silva came streaking through, and here again, uh, coming up from his defensive position, he, he knows he's a he's a old, he's a veteran, and uh, he's been around, so he knows when to make those runs. It's not just a question of uh, you know running up and down, up and flank, but knowing when to time it. Out high to Tanner, moving ahead, right for the kick. Oh, the arms of Busby and wide. Whoa, and I'll tell you, that was just a great save by Busby as Tanner got the ball and. Uh, Saw that Busby was kind of moving a little bit and just took a crack. And here we have it. Tommy Tanner right outside the box. He's putting it a great save by uh, Busby to keep it out of that upper nine. Another corner for the Rhinos. Fifth of the half. There it is for the wide side. Devin with a header and it puts it back out wide. Mackay again pops it up and this one coming down in front. Up in the air goes Busby. He'll kick it away out across midfield. So a couple more opportunities right there for the Rhinos. Settled by Tanner, moving quickly forward. Trying to sneak it through off the leg of Steenkamp. And recovered again by the Lynx. Spot Athena will shoot it out. And Rochester's been putting quite a bit of pressure on Toronto here. Toronto's just getting a lot of bodies back and trying to withstand this pressure, trying to go in with just only one goal down at half. De Silva, nifty move there down to the end line. A little give and go to himself. Throws it back at the 18, now taken by Tanner moving for it. Tanner in the middle. Steve Camp can't get the shot away. And the loose ball taken away by Holness. Beginning to move it upfield. Yeah, and Lennon Steenkamp had a, a good look at the ball. He probably might have been better off shooting the first time instead of trying to cut the ball back and uh, uh, trying to get through another player there. Here comes Steenkamp. Last field. Turning back is Walton being chased by Giamara. He'll drop it off for Schweitzer. Schweitzer moving forward. Two and a half minutes to go in the first half. one nothing in favor of the Rhinos. Two to Silva. Out to the 35-yard mark. Chips one in. Coming down to the box. Up goes Allnett. That's punched away by Busby, who comes down on top of Yuri Allnett. And the foul on the Rhinos. Free kick for the Lynx. I'll tell you, that was a great little chip in by uh, Mauro De Silva as he sent in Yari Allnett coming in from a uh, offensive midfielder, an overlapping run through. And uh, it basically was a 50-50 ball in the air. But usually when you get a collision, it's 50-50 that the goalkeeper will get it. There's a thing about protecting goalkeepers. So anything where there's collisions, it'll go to the goalkeeper. Keeper Busby drives it across midfield. Silva chasing after getting under the ball. That goes out, throw in for the links. 
think. Rhino's on top. First goal of the season for Jimmy Glenn. It's Titus. Trying to sneak it through to Thomas. He's chasing the corner to Rhino's to Silva and Demon on him. All in the corner. The battle goes on there. Still along the touch line and now over the end line. And a goal kick for the Rhinos. And Greg Denham did very well as he battled and battled in there with that big, strong body of his. And eventually he was able to get the ball to go over the end line so that they can get a, uh, a goal kick instead of uh, giving up a throw in to Toronto with that deep in its own territory. Elvis not too happy with the call. Under a minute to go here in the first half. And Onstead will just roll it forward to De Silva. Rhinos leading 1 0, having scored in the 20th minute. Kick across midfield. Glenn running onto the ball. Turns to the middle, trying to get away from Serentopoulos. Still spinning around, still has the ball. Drops it back for Walton. Leaves it off at Hardy to Walton. Ashton getting in the way, but Walton comes away, then stumbles. And the ball controlled by Ashton of the links to Holness. Just seconds to go here in the first half. Pass uh, knocked away by Schweitzer, and up with it now is Hardy to Tanner. As he's watched closely, sends it across midfield. Seconds ticking off here in the first half of play. Giamara, Makai stops, and he'll drive it up into the stands and out. Throw in for the links, but the clock is going to run out here. And Yogi, I'm sure, saw how much time was on the clock and said, let me just hammer this into the stand, and let's get out of here with that 1-0 uh, halftime lead. All right, so there it is, halftime here at Frontier Field. One goal scored, and that by the Rochester Raging Rhinos as the players head for the locker room. For halftime, we will continue in just a moment from Frontier Field. At the half, the Rhinos leading 1-0. This is the Raging Rhinos on the Empire Sports Network. We speak different languages. We practice different religions. We exist behind different borders. The lines we draw between us are strong, and yet there's a common ground out there with the power to erase them all. Umbro, only soccer since 1924. If you like hard-hitting lacrosse, the Buffalo Gamblers of the Ontario Lacrosse Association are for you. See the Gamblers compete for the Man Cup with players like the Kilgore Brothers, Jason Luke, Steve Fennell, Randy Murrens, Krupalowski, and lacrosse superstar Paul Gate. Don't gamble! Get your tickets now at the Arena Box Office, Fantastics Outlets, or by calling 888-4000. Two games this weekend, Saturday against Peterborough and Sunday Six Nations. Call 888-4000 for information. Do you really enjoy buying a new car? Didn't think so. That's why at Island Chevrolet, we think it's time for a change. No hype, no gimmicks. Just the best products and best service. We sell new Chevrolet cars and trucks and GM certified used vehicles so you can buy with confidence. We know how to sell cars and take care of our customers. When it comes to price, service, getting what you really want, it's time for a change. Island Chevrolet. Relationships offer certain advantages. He watches TV with me. So does the Marine Extra 3 account. She thinks all my jokes are funny. There are benefits to every relationship. He's got the greatest tools. Yeah, I want him back. Start one with Marine. sense of the word it is a wonder its energy is boundless its magnitude legendary it has the power to take your breath away true this is the one introducing casino niagara a magnificent world-class setting with spectacular diversions it's the most incredible new landmark to hit niagara since the falls Discover Casino Niagara because this is the one this is the only one a company in western New York is America's number one producer of ready-to-assemble furniture. Over the past five years, their net earnings are up 638%.
Some of the best kept investment secrets can be found right here in Western New York. Do you know who they are? We do, and we know how to put them to work for you. The Bullfinch Fund Western New York series. Invest right, invest right here. Frontier Field with the Rhinos lead the Toronto Lynx 1-0. Don Stevens along with Don Lalka, and we go down to the field now to Josh Mora. Josh? Okay, guys, I am with uh, Rhinos head coach Pat Urkeley. Uh, Pat, uh, some scary moments for you guys early. Toronto had some chances. Yeah, I mean, we started off a little lackluster there, maybe a little overconfident. Uh, now we've gotten a few, quite a few opportunities. We're not putting the ball in the back of the net. We've got the one, but we can't let a team like Toronto stay in the game like this. we got to put those chances away. Still, uh, you're very short at striker. Doug Miller did not make it uh, out of the lineup, or into the lineup, I should say. He didn't have Darren Tilly either. How is Yari Allnut at this point? Yari seems to be hobbling a little. We'll have to see at halftime here what he has to say in regards to the injury. I mean, I'm pretty, I think Jimmy Glenn came in, did a great job for us. Uh, Lennon seems to be a little rusty. We threw him up top, so I think he'll come out with a different uh, attitude in the second half and give us something. Can you expand a little bit on the, out, uh, the effort from Jimmy Glenn? Uh, obviously a great bonus for you guys in a game where you're short at striker. Oh, certainly. I mean, he's, he's a proven scorer. Uh, we needed him back from Columbus, and he's, he showed why today, why we need him. Uh, thoughts about uh, what you're going to say to the team uh, in halftime? Well, we have to go, uh, pick up our intensity a little bit and put away our chances. Was the team tight at first? Uh, maybe a little concerned about this streak uh, that, that's ongoing? Well, we played a tough game in Montreal with 10 men. That takes a lot out of you. Come back here, big crowd, jitters a little bit. I'm, I'm sure, you know, this, uh, even though we've tried to put the 11th game out of our minds, it's still there. So you know, I think they responded pretty good. They just have to put away our chances. Okay, Pat, thanks very much. Uh, good luck in the second half. Thanks very much. Pat Urkley, head coach of the Rochester Raging Rhinos. Don and Don, back to you. All right, thank you very much, Josh Morris. We are at halftime again at Frontier Field. one nothing in favor of the Raging Rhinos over the Toronto Lynx. We'll continue with halftimes and highlights coming up next. So stay with us for that. This is the Raging Rhinos on the Empire Sports Network. Which of these tires will stop faster? Actually, they stopped about the same. In almost any test you can think of, Toyo tires stand up against the best in the world. Call 1-800-88-TIRES for the Toyo tire retailer near you. Are you ready for two hours of non-stop action, world-class skill, and undeniable energy? Then you're ready for Rochester Raging Rhino Soccer. It's hot, it's exciting, and it kicks. Prepare yourself for heart-pounding, aggressive action. It's Rochester Raging Rhino Soccer. Get your Rhinos tickets today at the Frontier Field Box Office or call 454-KICK for more information. That's 454-K-I-C-K. Come see why Rochester is known as Soccer Town USA. He's not alone. After countless hours, days, and years of being first and last on the ice, he's had one dream to keep him company, to get into the NHL. Is it enough? Well, the road to the NHL is easier for you because this year's NHL Entry Draft and Xerox Fan Fest is at the Marine Midland Arena. Admission is free. You'll get a first-hand look at hockey's future stars, plus there are virtual reality and carnival games for the kids. Don't miss all the action on June 27th. It's a day everyone will look forward to. Delivering nature's best since 1852, or maybe beyond. Nature's best juices, spring and fluoridated water delivered right to your home or office. Yes, Mayor Brothers is more than apples. Call 668-1787 for delivery. At Value Vision, we know how much your collectible pieces mean to you. That's why we make sure to bring you the finest selection available in heirloom quality collectibles at affordable prices. As one of the country's premier shop at home channels, Value Vision proudly features many name brand collectibles with a wide variety of collections perfect for all ages. Look to Value Vision for a variety of fine collectibles on your local cable system today. 
Hi, Dan Edwards here at Empire Ford, Rochester's number one Ford buying dealership, and here's why. 1998 Escorts, 139 a month or 0.9% financing. 1998 Contours, fully equipped, 189 a month. That's power windows, locks, tilt, and cruise. Or Ford's best-selling vehicle, 1998 Taurus, just $199 a month, and again, 0.9% financing. Come on down and see us at Empire Ford and Webster, just five minutes east of the Sony Theaters and home of the lifetime free oil changes. Thanks, have a great day. Once again at Frontier Field tonight, where the Raging Rhinos have a one to nothing lead over the Toronto Lynx. We're at the halftime, and I'm Don Stevens along with Don Lalka in that first half. Pretty good first half, actually. Yeah, it was actually a very exciting first half. Uh, Rochester, a ton of chances. Uh, getting that defense just holding solid in the back. They got that goose egg back there. You know, it seemed like, Don, that the, the Toronto Lynx had the early chances, and then the Rhinos sort of took the game away near the end of the first half. Yeah, well, uh, Toronto came out with a couple opportunistic uh, chances. What they're doing is basically basically trying to counterattack. That's why Elvis is Elvis Thomas is getting caught in those uh, offside traps. But Rochester seemed to put an end to that and that took control of the game and just started putting steady pressure on uh, on uh, Toronto. Well, the Rhinos had an opportunity to score one early on, as we see on uh, the first of our replays. What's this one here from Tommy Tanner? Yeah, and here we have Tommy Tanner. What he does is he's going to take it to the right and he cracks one and the keeper makes a save with his right hand. Oh, there, there it is. That's it. That's the one where Yari Allnut came on it, but it was a touch off the keeper. Great All chance. Right, so that was the first one. Great opportunity for the Rhinos. And the next one they did capitalize on. Yeah, well, Rochester, you know, they take it, put it in the back of the net when they need to. And, and here we go. Here we have it. Jimmy Glenn, kind of a unique effort as he uh, took one guy on, and then he, uh, he he's going to beat another guy right here and still maintain his presence, look up, and then shoot right for the far corner, far, keeping it on the ground and, uh, or keeping it low, actually, making it very difficult for the goalkeeper to come across and save it. It's just a good effort by Jimmy Glenn to put it in the back of the net. And kind of a great story right there for Jimmy Glenn, who just returned today from Columbus of the MLS. His uh, first game back, and he scores a goal. Well, it wasn't all at that end of the field. There was activity at the other end of the field, and the Rhinos had to rely on their stone uh, stone wall, Pat Hunstad, the keeper, to come up big again. Yeah, and here's uh, here we have a great chance. Is uh, but What you're going to see here is, uh, I think it was a whole that cracked that one, but uh, Onstead right there, just right there, and it, it, that was the one that caught everybody's surprise because that was a shot from about 35 yards out. Well, certainly both teams had their opportunities in that first half as uh, each team, especially even early on, Elvis Thomas had just a tremendous opportunity, cracked it over the crossbar, and actually Toronto could have had the first, the first goal of the game. Yeah, Elvis is a very dangerous player. I think he's, you know, like, uh, like the old Elvis Presley was a great singer. Elvis Thomas is just a great soccer player. He's got great speed. That's that's the thing that Rochester has to watch out for. But so far, what they've done is they've kind of toyed with him defensively. In other words, they, they, they played back on him, and he's not sure now whether he has to break because they're using that offside trap. They're playing with his mind right now, so he doesn't know what he, if he's got to hold back or if he's got to break through. Good defense by Rochester. Well, certainly Toronto trying to attack as they've had lots of offsides in that first half of play. In fact, let's uh, take a look at the statistics in the first half, and the statistics brought to you by the document company, Xerox. Look at the shots are even up, Doc. Well, the shots look like they're even, but I'll tell you, in actuality, you've got to look at the quality of the shots. Rochester had some great, great opportunities. And I think basically the shots against Rochester, that long one and a couple of them went wide, weren't really as dangerous as perhaps the shots that Rochester had against Toronto. Now you see Busby, the keeper for Toronto, had four saves and Onstad had two. Actually, you know, it seemed like I think the uh, each keeper was maybe a little more busy than that. Well, that's, you know, that's sometimes the statistics don't really tell the truth because, you know, it depends what you consider a save. As you look at the corner kicks, you see the three for Toronto and four for the Rhinos, and then the fouls uh, led by Toronto in that first half. Yeah, well, it's, it's, uh, in that aspect, uh, I think th the thing that I'm noticing, Don, is that there's a little bit of inconsistency in the referee, because I think I alluded to a couple of times during the broadcast, the tackles from behind really have to be cracked down on, and uh, apparently the referees aren't, so I think they've got to get a little, a little tighter with those calls. Second half action just moments away here at Frontier Field. Pretty good first half. Stick around for the second half. Coming your way. At the half, it's the Raging Rhinos 1 and the Toronto Lynx 0. And this is the Raging Rhinos on the Empire Sports Network. The deck was the most satisfying job we can remember doing. Most everyone loves building decks. We'll show you how easy it is. The pressure-treated lumber Chase Pitkin carries. Top quality. 
We help you plan your deck, show you how to set posts, or we'll install it for you. They even showed us how to angle the nail so it pulls the decking tight. The right lumber, the right brackets, galvanized nails. Doing it yourself doesn't mean doing it alone. Chase Pitkin, you don't have to do it yourself. Hi, I'm Tony McCarthy at McCarthy Ford. For a new Ford car or truck, there are three reasons why you should come see us. Affordable prices, a huge selection, and quality service. That means you'll actually enjoy being our customer. We have 1999 heavy-duty trucks available for immediate delivery. So shop around for your new Ford, then come see us, McCarthy Ford. We're on Maple Street in Elma, right off Route 400. McCarthy Ford, affordable prices, quality service. If you like hard-hitting lacrosse, the Buffalo Gamblers of the Ontario Lacrosse Association are for you. See the Gamblers compete for the Man Cup with players like the Kilgore Brothers, Jason Luke, Steve Fennell, Randy Murrins, Krupalowski, and lacrosse superstar Paul Gate. Don't gamble. Get your tickets now at the Arena Box Office, Fantastics Outlets, or by calling 888-4000. Two games this weekend, Saturday against Peterborough and Sunday Six Nations. Call 888-4000 for information. In every sense of the word, it is a wonder. Its energy is boundless, its magnitude legendary. It has the power to take your breath away. Truly, this is the one. Introducing Casino Niagara, a magnificent world-class setting with spectacular diversions. It's the most incredible new landmark to hit Niagara since the falls. Discover Casino Niagara, because this is the one. This is the only one. Once upon a time, there was a printer that thought it was a copier. It was fast, 32 pages a minute. This printer collated, sorted, and stapled like a copier. Even had a name worthy of a copier. And starting at just $2,900, it made all the other printers very, very sad. That's the story of the Xerox DocuPrint N32, the printer that thinks it's a copier. The document company, Xerox. the road this summer for the International League's Thruway Series with upstate rivals Buffalo, Rochester, and Syracuse battling for bragging rights and AAA's coveted Thruway Cup. Enter to win a bus party for 30 at Cellular One and Cisco locations or at Nabisco Retail Displays. Contact your home team for upcoming Thruway Series games. Just moments away from the second half here at Frontier Fields. You look over the what sometimes is a baseball stadium, but we like to call it a soccer field here at Frontier Field. And you see the stands across the way are full. It's another huge crowd on hand tonight here at Frontier Field. And in that goal scored by the Rhinos in the 21st minute, Jimmy Glenn with his first goal of the season, Scott Schweitzer assisting on the goal, his first ever point as a raging Rhino. And very deservedly so. It's always nice to see those, those guys who really don't get a whole lot of credit for picking up points, Don. Yeah, exactly, especially the defenders, you know. And uh, uh, one of the reasons why Scott uh, Schweitzer has that ability to move move up is because of, uh, as I mentioned before, there's a complementary role between him and Craig Demon. Demon being that rock at Gibraltar stays back there, and Demon, uh, and actually Schweitzer in that case, can find those little openings, and he can uh, kind of get in there and, as, as we say, scheme a little bit, you know, try to create something. As we look at the raging rhinos, there's Scott Schweitzer right there. It does not appear that there will be any changes here to start the second half for the rhinos. Yuri Allnut is still in there. A questionable uh, slowed up with a sore foot. And Pat Onstead comes in, a little huddle as the captain, Tommy Tanner, talks things over with his teammates. And second half action about to get underway. Let's send you downstairs now to uh, field level to Josh Mora once again, Josh. Uh, thanks, guys. I am now with the head coach of the Toronto Lynx, uh, Pat Pinasoto. Pat, uh, what did you have to say to your team? Well, basically, I told them we play very well. We unfortunately that we're done one nothing. I don't think we deserve to be done one nothing. We had uh, two, three great chances in the first half. Fortunately, we missed them, and they took advantage on their chances, and uh, that's why we're done one nothing. Tell us a little bit about those chances. Uh, obviously, especially early, you had some good ones. Well, we had a very good chance with Nick Vinovich, which uh, I think he delayed his shot. And uh, if he would have shot uh, a little bit earlier, maybe it would have gone in. But he delayed his, uh, you know, his shot, and the defender put his foot in. And 
that's how it goes. And uh, Elvis Thomas had that clear chance, you know, I guess uh, too exciting to be in front of the net and just put it over the net. So, but I think we had some great chances to, to really at least be a uh, tight game or at least be up one nothing for us. There, there were still some chances or some stretches where uh, the Rhinos seemed to have the, really the better play of the stretch. Were you disenchanted with those uh, moments, especially leading up to the goal? Well, during the game, you're always going to get, especially uh, we play, you know, Rochester's played home in front of their crowd, and you're going to get times where they're going to dominate passing the ball around. But I thought we, we came behind the, the ball and we played very well. Pat, uh, thanks very much. Good luck in the second half. Peter, thank you very much. Peter uh, uh, and Don and Don, we send it back upstairs to you guys. All right, thank you, Josh Moore. And Peter Pinizado has done an excellent job his second year with the Toronto Lynx. And last year took his team on a 10-game winning string and uh, had a great year. Oh, exactly. As, as I said earlier, he was a good player himself. He had uh, had international experience and then played for that famous Toronto Italia club. Uh, produced a lot of great players over the years out of there. And now he's doing a great job as a coach. Pat Onstead, who you saw a moment ago, played for Toronto when they went on that 10-game winning string. And this year, he's trying to set a new league record as the Rhinos tonight looking for 11 consecutive wins. Had to establish a new A-league record. Tanner keeping the ball in out to midfield. And Vinovich up with it. Whirls it forward to hold this right back to Vinovich. His pass forward, stumping up with the play to intercept is Schweitzer. Right, Schweitzer, crossfield. Taken by Tim Hardy. Just getting underway in the second half. Tonight at Frontier Field. A run uh, for the ball by McKay. Can't get to it. Taken back now by the Lynx. There's Golan. Passing midfield. Off to Holness. As far as Silva's right on him. Holness dropping the back for Titus. And when I look it over, Don, I don't see any changes for the Lynx either here at half. Do you? Yeah, I don't really notice any. I think both teams are going with what uh, with what they came, as they say. That's I'm standing. Just put it up in the stands and get out of trouble. Yeah, and that was just a, a play by Onstead where he wasn't unsure of a couple of things. And uh, the, the whole rule of thumb is on defense. If you're unsure, just knock it out of there. Give it a chance for your defense to set up. Throw in for the Lynx. Ball drop back. No, here's a new player. It is uh, Caparella in the lineup. Caparella, number 23. Phil Caparella forward. Up front for the Toronto Lynx. Now we can pick up who's out of the match. Played into the middle, brought away. Here's Walton, sends it downfield for Glenn. And he gets in behind. Moving by Holmes. Here's Glenn in the run. Can't get the ball. It's blocked away by Busby. Now on the attack, Steve Camp is pulled down by Busby. And the ball is brought away. No whistle. Actually, I heard a whistle, but I think it must have been in the stands. Yeah, and that was just a great long run by uh, uh, by Jimmy Glenn. And on the last touch, he just pushed it a little bit too far, and the keeper got at it. But a good hustling move in by Lennon Steenkamp almost to, to put that rebound in. Kind of getting a second bite of the apple there. Back for the ball, Spadafina. Off to Titus and begins to move forward. Cross midfield, Thomas into the middle for Holness. On that, uh, the Rhinos on Holness, but Holness pulls it back into the middle, overruns the ball, leaves it off for Ashton. Trying to sneak it through, but De Silva intercepts. Comes away with the ball. Morrow De Silva shows patience as he moves by Ashton. Now to Tanner. Back to De Silva. Nice little one-touch pass off to Steenkamp. In the middle for Tommy Tanner. Moving forward, gets the ball through, but De Silva in behind. And an offside against the Rhinos. And I tell you that, uh, oh, here's the substitution. What it was is that uh, Caparella came in for uh, Gumera. That's, that was a different. William Gumera's out, and uh, Caparella is in. On that last play, what happened was, actually, if that ball had been pushed a little quicker through, then we wouldn't we would have seen the offside by De Silva. The midfielders just held the ball up a little too long. Uh, De Silva made a great run through, and you've got to make a quick touch in here to turn him loose there. Here come the links. Vinovich blocked by De Silva, takes the ball away nicely. As he puts it out, so a throw in for the Lynx. Steenkamp dropping it there for Titus, who plays it in now to Golan on the throw in. Just getting started here in the second half, and it is a 1-0 lead for the Rhinos. Mackay attacking, and the ball brought away by Caparella, but the uh, whistle stops play. Sports fans getting the best sports coverage in the region now means you don't even have to change the channel. Every weekday at 4.30 and 9.30, Fan TV brings you the best stories, news, and highlights on the Buffalo Bills, Sabres, AAA baseball, and so on. A whole lot more, so catch...
and TV right here on the Empire Sports Network. And what we just had was we had Manuel De Silva giving up the corner kick because, again, there was uncertainty. So what he did is just knocked it out, waited for the defense to come back and set up. Set piece in the box, headed away by all night. It is Sarantopoulos back to take the ball for the Lynx. Pass off to Spadafina. He'll go deep up the wing, and that one gets away from the Toronto Lynx and a throw in for the Rhinos in their own territory. And the Rhinos up 1 0. Long throw in by Hardy across midfield for all night. He runs into, crashes into Sarantopoulos and goes down. All night got his foot up a little high. Dangerous play there, and it'll be a free kick for the Lynx. Yeah, Yari Alna was just a little too aggressive right there as he thought that he might be able to touch that ball and kind of flip it over to a defensive player, but wasn't enough room and just ran right into him. No question about that foul. Well, you could see Yari Alna hobbling as he came. Here we play. have it again. Here he is. He's, he's trying to get that touch, and the player was just too tight there. And luck, luckily, that the player didn't catch that cleat right in the face. Yeah. You could see that, uh, that Alnett was hobbling a little bit as he came away. Just bothered by a foot. Foot injury. Well, pass deep in the uh, zone. Vinovich. No, that was out. So it'll be a throw in for the Rhinos deep in their own end. one nothing. Rhinos scoring back in the 21st minute. Jimmy Glenn, assisted by Scott Schweitzer. Here's the throw in for the Rhinos. De Silva to Tanner, and he's pulled down. Well, they say the foul's on Tanner. Well, that was one of those where it's six of one, half dozen of another. Both players kind of were in there, and uh, when he blew the whistle, whichever way he blew it, uh, somebody was going to complain. Sarantopoulos across midfield. Nice with a chip shot in the box, and Thomas in behind. Offside flag is in the air. There's a shot, but the flag is up. Flag is up across the way. The offside flag was up long before. We're going to have a lot of arguments here, let me tell you. And the flag was up before he took the shot. I know, but they didn't see it, and they still think they still and they still think that there's that's what I'm saying. There's gonna be a lot of arguments. They're celebrating that there's a goal. I don't think Toronto ever saw it. And the Rhinos trying to get a quick restart as Holmes is arguing. Now they pull the ball back and do it again. And here's the Rhinos on the attack. There was no goal. As it was offside, I saw the flag go up and couldn't believe that they were there was no whistle. Trying to sneak it through the links. Sarantopoulos, attacked by Glenn, blocked away, and out of bounds. So it'll be a throw in for the Rhinos. And here we have it. And uh, yes, the player was offside. He was behind the other player. There's no question about it. He came back from an offside position to retrieve the ball. That is a clear offside. And you can see, if you get a chance to look at uh, Peter Pinizato, the coach of the Toronto Lynx, he is really going at the fourth official over on the sideline. And the players are still talking to the referee who has pulled the yellow card out of his pocket. Yeah, and there was a yellow card that was issued, but I wasn't sure to which player because I was trying to catch what's happening between the argument uh, of the coach here and, uh, and uh, what, what is going on uh, over there on the far end of the field as well. We'll see if we can figure out who the yellow went to. Well, there was no question about it. I mean, the flag across the way was up long before the ball ever came in and got in behind the uh, player. All right, here, we, here we're going to see. I think the yellow card is going to be coming up to Holmes right here. Got oh, is that what it is? Oh, okay. So, free kick. 52nd minute as Holmes picks up the yellow. Here's the free kick in the box, and now comes uh, Busby to grab it. Not too difficult to play right there for him. And I tell you a couple of interesting little calls here. This little uh, the sequence here, the, the the goal that was called back, which was actually an offside. And I think the game's going to start getting a little cheeky here, as they say, meaning that the ball is going to come in, players are going to come up, uh, get a little rougher. So let's uh, let's see how it develops. And they say De Silva got the foot up a little bit of a dangerous play there, so it'll be a free kick for the Lynx. One nothing. Rhinos leading 37 minutes. Time remaining here in the second half of play. Sarantopoulos ahead for Golan. I still can't believe there was no whistle because the flag was up a long time before the ball ever came through to Thomas, who then took the shot and put it in. Right, and I guess that the flag was up, the flag was up, but the referee never blew the whistle on it, and I think that's why Toronto thought saw that... The the, flag. Uh, pardon me? He, uh, he must not have seen the flag. Yeah, exactly. You know, but uh, you know, he the flag was up there and it stayed up and never came down. So definitely it was an offside. Rhinos have the ball. 
This is Schweitzer being attacked now by Ashton and gets a pass forward. Nice touch on the ball to Bakai, but blocked away and out, so it'll be a throw in for Toronto. And with that call, you might think that the Lynx are going to get some calls now going their way. Quite often happens that way is maybe the officials feeling a little sorry for the team or hoping that they didn't make a mistake, which they didn't. Now brought forward into the box, chip shot into the middle, header by Vinovich off the post, and in the net. Oh, and what a great. Post. It came back out, actually hits on step, goes back in the net, and that evens it up. Vinovich over to yell at the linesman, right in the face of the linesman. It'd be a dangerous play there, but no cards. Or is it going to be? Yes, I believe that the referee coming over to say something to Vinovich. Yeah, he had his card out, and I'm sure he probably gave, did give a card to Vinovich, but this is just a great header. Watch him snap on that one right in there. Oh, God, that thing just quite had, like, had eyes on it, that ball. And there he is. There's the goal scorer, Nicky Vinovich. He played for Rochester last year. 55th minute. As Vinovich scores his third of the season, and then uh, receives the yellow, I believe, also in the 55th minute. So it's all even up now at one apiece. Tie game. They continue on now in the second half, and that is three goals uh, this season already that the Rhinos have allowed. Already. Already? Already in 11 games, they've allowed three. Out to midfield. Ally Walton. Off to Schweitzer. Pulls it forward, but all, all that can't come up with the ball. It's brought away by Vinovich. Pass ahead, and now here come the uh, links again. Holness sneaks it through to Thomas. Out comes Onstead, scoops up the rolling ball. Yeah, Pat Onstead read that quite easily. It was a good ball that was pushed through, but uh, he comes right out so quickly, reads so well, and just there's was, there was no problem with that. Steen Camp pulling the ball forward, sneaks it through after it is Glenn, but it's here to side. And out of bounds by uh, Spadafina. And I'll tell you, we're starting to see a wide open game now because that lifted the uh, Toronto spirits, and we're seeing the uh, end to end action at this point. Sneaking through a steam camp, takes a foot, left footed in on goal, grabbed by Busby. It's a and nice, nice little move by Lennon Steam Camp as he went right around that player and then just took a good shot at it, uh, a good crack at it, left footed. And uh, unfortunately for him, uh, the keeper was right in the right spot. High ball across midfield, off of Thomas. Walton back to settle it, and the Rhinos have the ball. 33 and a half minutes to go in the second half as the Lynx have just evened this one up at one apiece. Trying to stop the Rhinos in their bid to set a new egg league record here tonight of 11 consecutive wins. Land to Walton. Throws it off on the open wing to Schweitzer. He's watched by Vinovich. Schweitzer's pass downfield. Collected away, but kept in play by Titus. For Ashton. As he pulls the ball off to the touchline, and now Titus with it again. Dean Camp on him. Titus turning back. Plays it up the wing, but intercepted by De Silva. Settles the ball, gives it off to Tanner. In the middle for Walton. He'll go across field. Hardy after it. Slips it forward to Yogi Mackay. Here come the Rhinos on the attack in the middle. Now Walton at the 35, moving in, ball blocked away, but Tanner still with it. At the 18, sneaks it through, and out comes Busby, has the ball. Takes it on one bounce. Tommy Tanner looking for Jimmy Glenn, I believe, there as he was trying to lead Jimmy Glenn through and just the pass was a little, a little too much steam on it. All the way downfield. Take it by Demon. By Ed Ferron, that turns up field. Wayne watched closely by Golan. He'll drop it back to Schweitzer. Even deeper to Demon. Pass cross field rolls out of bounds. So a giveaway by the Rhinos. Yeah, now the Lynx with it at midfield. Yeah, it was very uncharacteristic of the Rochester defense. Maybe they're a little uh, uh, flabbergasted by that goal that was scored against them. You know, they get so few scored against them that they probably can't believe it at this point. Spot of Fina. Glenn watching on. There's Serentopoulos for the Lynx. Out to midfield for Vinovich. Turns it across midfield. Back.
back in the middle, blocked away by Hardy, and stepping up is Schweitzer, but then a sliding block there, and the ball brought away by Tanner. Rhinos have it. In the middle, Schweitzer, passing midfield. Moves to his left, he's dumped by uh, Spadafina, and a free kick for the Rhinos, about 40 yards out. Yeah, and Spadafina did, uh, that was basically what we call a professional foul. He saw what was happening, it was a good counterattack, and he came up kind of from his deep defensive position, said, heck, I'll just give up the foul. Walton to De Silva. Going for the middle, into the box, hit her by on that, settled there by Steenkamp, trying to move it forward. Steenkamp being pulled at, gets the left foot on him, but puts it high and wide. But I think we have a deflection there, so I'm pretty sure that's going to be a corner kick. Uh, Lennon doing a lot of hard work in there. Yes, it is. It's a Rhinos and Daikon corner kick. The kickstart your digital communication needs. Call Daikon. Yogi Mackay takes the corner kicks as he will here. Left foot it out, swinging kick for the short side and headed away out of the box by Golin. Tanner up with it for the Rhinos. Moves it back in the middle. Pass, no. Walton can't reach it, and the Lynx have the ball. Thomas slipping it across field is. Thomas was dumped by Schweitzer, and it's a foul on the Rhinos. And there again was, and there again is what we, we call a professional foul. Schweitzer came up. He saw it might be a, different, a dangerous situation. The ball was at midfield. Gave up the foul and just uh, let the ball settle down. Give a chance for his defenders to come back. Get some composure back there. Very smart play. Saw so a moment ago Mike Kerms uh, being stretched out, getting ready to come into the match, it would appear. Here's the play now. Into the Rhinos end near the end line. Thomas won't get there in time. That's out. Looks like uh, he'll be coming in for Yogi Mackay. Mike Kerms, who really, when he comes in, he goes a mile a minute, doesn't he? Yeah, Mike, he's just got a tremendous amount of energy. And, of course, he's got those great bursts of speed. And usually when you get him at this point in the game, the, the opposition has uh, kind of been worn down a little bit. And that even makes him more effective because his speed is... Uh, is that much uh, that much more obvious when he's in there? In the 60th minute, Mike Kearns comes in and Yogi Mackay is out, and maybe the television audience will get a chance to see that flip throw in that he does. Hope he gets get a chance to see that. We'll have to watch Mike Kearns for that throw in. That's right. I forgot who does that one. That, that, that's just uh, if you haven't seen it, that is really spectacular. He does a complete flip and just gets a whip action out of that ball. Downfield, the Rhinos. Team camp up for the ball, but that's knocked out off of the uh, head of Titus. So a throw in for the Rhinos. Silva over to make the throw in. Long throw in. Team camp flicks it forward to Walnut. They work near the end line. Walnut tried to put it off of the Toronto player now, but missed and is brought away in upfield by Titus. Out of the links. Into the middle for Ashton. He'll go across field. Vinovich working the right wing side. He watched closely by Hardy. Vinovich and Hardy chase the ball, and it uh, still kept in play by Vinovich, but the Rhinos have it. Taken and turned away by Ashton, and now the Lakes recover the ball. In the middle for Vinovich, the goal scorer for Toronto, sneaking it through to Thomas, and then intercepted by Kearns. He'll send it cross field, but nobody on the open wing, so another giveaway by the Rhinos. And again, that's uh, that's kind of uncharacteristic as well. We don't see many, we haven't seen many of those down. We're just playing giveaways like that. Uh. Back into the Toronto end of the field, chased after by Spadafina. 28 minutes to go, second half. We're all even up at one apiece. Rhino scored in the first half and adding a goal here in the second half. The Lynx. Holmes. to Sarantopoulos, right back to Holmes. Watching on is Glenn. Here's the feed through to midfield. Kerms couldn't come up with it, and the ball still controlled by the Lynx. Sarantopoulos across midfield to Ashton. Sneaks by Walton, still with the ball. Now pass off to Vinovich. She's watched closely. Pass away for Cabarella. Sends it up the wing, and that went over top of Vinovich and out. Go in for the Rhinos. Then went into the field. Vinovich has been having a nice game today for uh, Toronto. He's, he's showing a lot of that great individual skill that he has, uh, and this has been causing problems for Rochester. At midfield, headed forward. Steen can't be able to keep it in play. Pass off to Glenn, but rolled off his foot. Now they say the ball was out, so throw in across the way for Toronto. Roller into the middle, and Titus takes the ball. 1-1 one, one tie. In the 64th minute. Links controlling the ball in their own end of the field. 
these teams will meet three times this uh, regular season. The next two will be played in Toronto. Next time they play, it'll be uh, July the 19th, and then it's September the 6th in Toronto. Yeah, and this is uh, shaping up to be a, a nice little rivalry. And as I said earlier, remember I said that you can take the record book and throw it out when these two teams meet. And uh, here's the evidence of that. Toronto being four and five, Rochester ten and zero. You expect an easy game for Rochester, but here they do. They got a battle in their hands. And Silva sends it across midfield. Home settles it, but taken away by Alden. Nice job there, and Harry Alden up the wing, looking for the crossing ball. Stops as traffic catches up, and the ball is taken away. And the attack. And moving forward, the Lynx. Titus being watched now sends it forward into the center circle. And it's blocked away by Hardy. Takes it, gets it back, and it's deflected away and recovered by the Lynx. Sarantopoulos. Right on him is Kerm. Sarantopoulos gets away and a pass up field for Caparella or the uh, midline for Holness. As he moves forward on the wing for Ashton. Crossing ball in front. Enter by Caparella, and then it's flicked out of the box by the Silva. On to it, Tanner. Cross midfield, ball settled, and it's picked up again by Toronto. Rolling into the center circle for Vinovich. He does his work and now drops it back across midfield for Holmes. To Sarantopoulos. 1 1. We're all even up here. 25 minutes to go in the second half. Toronto links in white. Coming into tonight. Four wins and five losses on the season, a two and four record on the road. And Rhinos, of course, coming in 10 and 0 on the season. Trying to get the through ball to Thomas, but headed away. Balls it for Mike Kearns. He crosses midfield, goes wide. Kearns now 35 yards up, moving forward. Ball just taken away. Tried to sneak it through, but didn't get enough on it. 12,152 the attendance here tonight. Great crowd on hand at Frontier Field. Yeah, that's a super crowd. It's just a great evening for a game. The weather is perfect, uh, and we've got a good game on our hands uh, going back and forth. I, I think Rochester's probably going into uncharted territory here, being tied at this point in the game. They're usually ahead and uh, kind of coasting at this point. And there is one game they went to overtime this year, which is the only time the, the, only time that the Rhinos have gone uh, Beyond regulation. Cross midfield. And the attack here's Tanner with Steve Camp. Tanner moving into the 18. Lost the ball. Gets it through. Trying to catch up and it's blocked away. And out of the end line. Nice hard work by Tommy Tanner. Yeah, and Tommy is uh, that hard worker that he is. That's what he's known for. He's just tried to get through maybe one too many guys. Might have might have been a potentially that uh, towards the end, a little touch off to the left. Uh, here we have a replay. Tommy Tanner coming in. And you see Lennon breaking in the space. Lennon, here's Tommy beats it or gets, actually does get around those two guys and uh, still trying to get through some. I guess the ball went a little bit too far. Just that last touch by Tommy was a little bit too far. And Sarantopoulos is down on the field and taking a little bit of a breather and a drink of water while he's there. This will be a corner kick for the Rhinos. And they had five in the first half and two here in the second. So seven corners on the evening for the Rhinos. Moro De Silva over to take the uh, corner kick as Sarantopoulos gets up. It is a Rhinos DICOM corner kick. Kickstart your digital communication needs called DICOM. And what Mauro does is he has this ball that he brings in. It's not only a, he, he puts a banana or English on it where it curves, but he also puts a drop on it. And it's very difficult for a keeper to, to gauge that. Or the short side now rolled back in the middle. Walton drops it all the way back out to midfield. So the Rhinos trying to set up on the attack again. Hardy to Schweitzer. Who assisted on the Rhinos' first goal. Schweitzer chips it up the wing, but Holness settles it off his chest and sends it the other way. That one will be out, so a throw in for the Rhinos at midfield. 1-1 one, one tie. I'll leave it up. Just over 22 minutes remaining in the second half. The pass into Yuri Alnett. He's grabbed and pulled down by Golden. Restart. Rhinos with the ball. Walton to Craig Demon. Through ball, getting it to uh, Glenn. Right back to Demon. Left foot a kick, but he shanked it. And puts that one out over the end line. 
Yeah, he's, he thought maybe if he can get hold of one from about 35 yards out, that's always, you know, it's a little, a little bit of wishful thinking by defender. You know, as a defender, I always like to do that too, come up as soon as they had a chance, take a crack at that ball. But most of the time, defenders aren't, don't have the accuracy as the forwards on their shots. Busby getting set for the goals kick, goal kick. Rhino scored the first half. The Lakes have come back here in the second half to even it up. Ed Schweitzer turning to get away from Thomas. Off on the wing to Tim Hardy, who moves forward across midfield. Hardy, little nifty footwork there, being watched out, crossing ball into the box after it. Steve Camp hits it up over the crossbar and comes down all over the bar and in behind the net. A little bit too much on the header by Lennon Seekin. Yeah, that was one of those situations where what Lennon was caught, he was caught backing up. And when you're caught backing up, you can't really get any power into that head ball. And you can't really settle in and place it. So, with, so basically, all you do is just kind of as you're backing up, it loops up in the air on you. Right away by Titus. Well, he'll give it away. Out over the uh, touchline, then he kicks it all the way downfield. There's a bit of a delay. Well, the Rhinos want the quick throw in, but referee says, no, wait a minute. Referee Anthony Perdue, his assistant Stephen Adamak and Islam Salah. And the fourth official tonight is Ken Tanner as you look at catch uh, coach Pat Ercoli of the Raging Rhinos. Tanner and Thomas fighting for the ball, but it's brought away by Vinovich of Toronto. And midfield intercepted by Walton. Rhinos have it in the, the middle for Steenkamp. Trying to get it through for all well, not in that interceptor, then headed by Steve Camp forward. Right, kicked away again by the Lakes out the midfield. Kicked away by De Silva for Schweitzer, and the Rhinos have the ball. He'll go cross field. To Mike Kearns, adds it forward. Going ball picked up by the keeper, Busby. Play kind of being a little, little ragged and sloppy in the, about the last couple of minutes. Both team, neither team can really get control and get control of that midfield, try to build and create something going into the attack. It's just kind of being pushed around here at this point. A little under 20 minutes to go in this uh, second half of play. Tonight at beautiful Frontier Field, downtown Rochester, New York, and certainly pleased to have you folks along. I'm Don Stevens along with Don Lawka and Josh Mora. Bring you the A-League action tonight. Northeast Division matchup between the Rochester Raging Rhinos and the Toronto Lynx. Running on the ball. Kerms trying to get it loose as he goes down, and it's brought away by the Lynx. Rhino in white. Crossing midfield into Rhinos territory. Drop back again to Holmes. She sends it cross field. Looks like it may be another substitution for the Rhinos coming up here. We've seen Nate Delacon, who scored the only goal of the last game against Montreal. There's a through ball trying to catch Holness in behind, but he slowed up by De Silva. Ball rolls out over the end line. And the referee signal. Evidently, is a corner kick. Yeah, he signaled for the corner kick, whereas Mario De Silva felt that that should have been a goal kick, but. Uh, the referee said, no, sir. Set piece, Vinovich for the wide side, and the header ball pops up in the air. Alma gets ahead to it, and the whistle is stopped. Place team camp comes out and grabs the ball. A little pushing going on in front of the net. Ball now brought away by Tim Hardy. Hardy looking around as he wants to play it back now to... Wal uh, Walton moves it across midfield, stumbles the ball, gets a pass off for Tanner. Hardy to Tommy Tanner. Just under 18 minutes to go in the second half. 1 1 tie. Steen Camp dropping the ball back to Demon. Rolling it forward, and on that, he'll go off the wing to Mike Kerms, runs under the ball, and break right back in the middle, turns to get away, still has it. Crossing ball through the box, and the wide side for this over. Silva rolls it along the goal now. And De Silva th thought he had an excellent chance there as he uh, took the, the, the change of the point of attack from Kerms, went all the way across to Mauro De Silva. And he had, although he had a tough angle, I think he was trying to just whack it across. And even if he didn't go in, he figured that what he was going to do is maybe get a touch on by somebody. Looks like Nate Delacon coming into the match and Jimmy Glenn coming out. Glenn, great job in his first night back from the MLS. 
as he comes out again here in the 73rd minute. And Dalekon going in. And what I speculate you're going to see, I think, you, I think you're going to see Ari Allnut moving up to a striker position and Delacan probably playing into midfield, sliding into midfield. All right, set to go now with 16 and a half minutes to go. That's headed away by Delacan. After the ball is Serentopoulos, and then they went off of Allnut and out. It'll be a throw in for the Rhinos. Mike Kerms over for the throw in. Problem with he can't get the flip throw in, I don't think, because there's no room for the run. And the ball, is there from there? I don't know. It looks like he, nah, I guess nah. he's not going to do it. He just do the uh, regular throw in. All right, that might be a problem. We may not be able to see that. He's on the wrong side of the field. Now after it, Delacon. Picked up by Walton. Trying to sneak it through. Delacon with the ball. Back in the middle. Drops it off for Kerms. Comes loose and Tanner with it for the Rhinos. Cracks a right flip, but that bounces away. Holness. Trying to settle the ball, does get it by and moves out to midfield. Sends it cross field. Vinjevic with Hardy on him. Deep in the zone, Vinjevic trying to break for the end line, goes down, and the ball taken away by Tim Hardy. Right upfield. Hardy deep across midfield, and after it, Steenkamp hits it with the right foot to keep it in play, being watched by Titus. Stops, looks around. Still has it. Rolls it for it. Steve Kent on the right side. Looking for the crossing ball. Puts it off the leg of Titus. Oh, and came back and Nick Steve Kent and went out. Hey, folks, you can learn from the pros. The Rhino Soccer School. Now registering kids ages 6 to 16. Nine locations in western New York. Sessions are filling up fast, so call today. Lennon a bit unlucky on that last one when he thought that he was going to get the get the, at least the corner kick because he was hemmed in there and as it bounced off the other player just nicked his foot and went out. Delacon one touch to see can't do all that. Trying to sneak through can't get loose. Now sends the ball across. Tight is back for it as the Rhinos are pushing up here and creating some great opportunities. Schweitzer intercepts trying to go behind his back with a pass. Ashton goes down and a foul against the Rhinos. To Vinovich. 14 and a half minutes to go here in the second half. Stolen by De Silva for Walton. Crossfield pass to Mike Kerms. Back to Walton. Ashton watching him. Walton into the middle for Tanner. Plays it back, and Schweitzer moving up on the play for the Rhinos. Right, Schweitzer. Trying to sneak it through, but that's blocked away and taken by the Lynx. Cross field for Thomas. Off his shoulder, moving forward. Devin getting back. Beats Thomas to the ball, but Thomas spinning around still has it. Now burst of speed, moving in his shot. Missed the short side and out. Boy, you can see some speed on Craig Devin. As the uh, great speed of Thomas, but Demon right there with him. Demon right there with him, and what Denham did was just did the smart thing as a defender. He kind of pushed him to an angle where he really couldn't shoot, and that showed good teamwork between the defender and the goalkeeper. In other words, what Demon did was pushed him into a certain area that uh, Onstead at that point takes over and cuts off that angle and pretty much doesn't give the forward much of a shot at it. Push through now to Thomas once again. Moving up here, right foot, but that's blocked away and carried off by the Rhinos. Walton to Kerms, 1-1 one, one tie, 13. Just a little over 13 minutes to go in the second half. In the middle for Delacon. As it's taken away, but Walton there to steal it back, and Delacon is pulled down. Play goes on, Walton with the ball. Feed forward to Tommy Tanner. Off the wing, here's De Silva, overlapping right in line. Can't get there in time. Nice try by Mauro De Silva. It's just out over the end line. And what has happened is in about the last 10 minutes, you're starting to see Mauro da Silva really acting like Cafu from Brazil. He's coming up to that flank like crazy. Uh, just a little unfortunate pass was a bit too long that he couldn't get it uh, get to it, but he is definitely in an attacking mode right now off that right defensive spot. Play underway again. Go kick across midfield. Ball settled to the midfield line, and da Silva has it. He's grabbed onto by Holness. Free kick for the Rhinos after the fall to the foul to hold us. On the restart. Schweitzer goes cross field to Hardy. And 35 yards out. 
pass off of the wing for Kearns. Looks it over, back out top for Delicon. He'll drop it all the way back to midfield for Demon. And up the wing to Mike Kearns once again. In the corner, Hardy, still in deep. Plays it back to Demon. It's under 12 minutes to go in the first half. In the middle, Allnut. It was lost, but taken back again by Allnut. Off to Kearns. To Delicon. As the Rhinos trying to set it up here. Regain the lead. Off on the wing for Schweitzer. In the box. Out of the foot of Steenkamp at the 18. Kicked away by Golden now. Getting to it, the Rhinos. Walton again. They'll feed it forward to Hardy. And a roll it through. Delicon turns. Being guarded by Cabarella. In the far corner for Kearns. Crossing ball. In the right side. Busby up in the air. Takes it as Steenkamp was right on him. Busby with the ball. And at this point, Toronto's bringing a lot of bodies back. I guess it looks like they're figuring, well, let's uh, let's play for the overtime at this point or for the draw, which is probably a good, a good thing for them. And Rochester just throwing a lot of bodies forward. There's a throw ball. It's not offside this time after it. Thomas moving back inside. Look for the kick. Blocked away by Einstein. Big save. Oh, huge save for Einstein. Last midfield. Tanner now Steve Kent. Bob in the wing moving in his uh, curves but can't get through it as that's headed away. At midfield, recovered by Chan Tanner and the finals of the ball. Now through to Steve Kemp, moving in, but he won't get there as Busby blocks the ball. And real good end-to-end -end action here because there was a great save by Anstead uh, just a few seconds ago and all of a sudden the ball's up here with Rochester threatening. It was just a great run up top and Anstead uh, perhaps saving the game there because that could have very easily with a lesser goalkeeper been in the back of the net. Off on the wing for Vinovich. Still 1-1 with 10 minutes now to go. 10 minutes remaining in the second half. Ball throw into Ashton. Tanner, no, can't come up with it. Titus for the Lynx gives it away to Walnut, and the Rhinos have it. On the wing to Steenkamp across midfield. Dropping the ball back for Craig Demon into the center circle for Walton. Walton on the attack for the Rhinos. Out wide to Hardy, crossing ball to Walnut, but that's headed away by Spadafina. Now up is Delicat. Gets it inside the box, and Titus getting to it, rolls it off on the wing. But the Silva's there for the Rhinos. To Tanner. As he looks around, De Silva tried to make the overlapping run, but Tanner couldn't get the ball through. Gives it back to De Silva. Crossing ball. It is on the Just a great, great call served up to Yari Arnold from Mauro De Silva. And uh, you've heard us mention his name a lot here in that second half. Mauro De Silva making those great, great overlapping runs. And he just laid a ball out that was right on Yari's head. And Yari, of course, just a great finish. Jumped up in the air, snapped it down the way you're taught from the time you're a little kid. You snap it down so that the keeper has a harder time going down for the ball instead of uh, being up within reach of him. It was just a great play. And here we have it. Watch this. Watch this ball Mauro De Silva brings in. Just fantastic. Look at this. Bam. Perfect. It's a picture-perfect goal. That's the way you draw it up on, uh, uh, on the chalkboard. So the Rhinos are up 2-1, to one, and now we'll try and uh, close the door here. That's blocked away, and now by De Silva, we'll try and uh, close the door here. That's blocked away, and now by De Silva. What a game he's playing. Along with that man right there, Yerry on that with his sixth goal of the season. Titus crossing ball, but that's pulled away by Schweitzer. Sends it ahead for Steenkamp. And he's watched closely by Golden, trying to put it off the foot of Golden, and the Lynx take it back at midfield. Spadafina dropping it deep in his own end for Holmes. Off of the wing for Golan and across midfield. Holmes looking to sneak it through to Ashton. On the wing for Titus. Won't get there. The ball is out and a throw in for the Rhinos. Seven and a half minutes to go on the regulation or in the second half. Looks like we'll have a substitution. DiPacido getting ready to come into the match for the uh, Toronto Lynx. Headed forward by Walton for Tanner. Taken away by Golan. 
in the middle and trying to sneak it through to Thomas. Demon racing after the ball gets there, keeps it out of the box. Demon still bothering by Thomas. And Thomas goes down a foul, a free kick for the Lynx. About 19 yards out for Toronto. Yeah, that was just a, a, a good, strong battle between uh, two players, and it's one of those that you could have called it one way, you could have called it the other. It just would happen to be that it was called against uh, Demon, and it's a dangerous uh, spot here because uh, Nicky Vinovich just has tremendous, tremendous uh, service from the, from the ball. He, he can do miracles with that ball here, so Rochester has to be extremely alert on this ball. Deposito. We'll make the substitution here in the 84th minute. Yeah, what he's doing is Sharon Topolis. And what he's doing here is just uh, bringing in an extra forward and pulling a defender out. Free kick header over top and out of play. So it'll be a goal kick for the Rhinos. Rochester looking for the league record here tonight. Trying to make it 11 straight and have regained the lead now. Out on top, 2-1. to one. And have to hold on for another six minutes. And if this is the point where they'll have to solidify the back, uh, in other words, the midfielders have to come back and help out and not make those long runs, perhaps even pull one of the forwards back uh, instead of playing with two into a midfield role and just get the, get the one goal win. Great kick for the Lynx. Off on the wing. Vinovich rolling it back into the middle. Left footed kick trying to sneak it through, but Dimon gets away with that one. The Tanner. Midfield on the wing, running onto the ball to Steenkamp. Able to keep it in play. Steenkamp moving forward. Has the ball to the end line. Is taken back by Titus. Drops it for Holmes. And the links with the ball, but Steenkamp almost leaving it away. Great hard work by Landon Steenkamp. Out of the end line is out, and it's off the leg of Steenkamp. So a throw in deep in the corner for the Toronto Lakes. And I'll tell you, Don, ditto to what you just said. Good hard work by Lennon Steenkamp in that corner. He didn't allow the ball to come out. He didn't give him any, any freedom to just keep moving the ball out of there. But what he did is he made a problem for those defenders, and therefore they all he had was a throw in way back in their own end. At midfield. De Silva getting in the way of that one to take it loose. And as he's pulled away from the ball, does get it. Oh! <laughs> De Silva called to the foul as De Placido went down. The referee's going to stop the clock. He's giving Tanner a yellow card. And I, I'm pretty sure that that card was giving four descent, probably for saying something to the referee, because Tanner was nowhere involved in that play, just probably making a comment to the referee and just getting a warrant, uh, a yellow card. And that's usually a silly reason to get a yellow card. Actually, I think that he was saying that Tanner just put the ball out of play purposely for delay. Get him for delay a game, perhaps. Well, his play now picks up again. Four and a half minutes to go here in the second half. Off to the wing for Cabarrota, trying to go for the end line. Pushing hard, he goes down. And the ball rolling out, and it'll be a foul free kick for the Rhinos. Yeah, and it was headed... They both had their hands initially. Initially, it was Hardy had it uh, on Caparella, and then Caparella had him on Hardy, and I guess uh, that was the last one. So, and there, you, as you see it right there, Caparella at that point just pushed it. Well, Hardy gave it a little bit of a, in one of those Greg Luganus dives there, but, uh, you know, he got the foul. On stat across midfield, deep downfield, but right in behind the steam camp. Offside by about a month. Yeah, it wasn't even close there. Lennon was just caught napping up there. All right. Free kick for the Lynx. Clock runs. Just over three and a half minutes to go in the second half. Here come the Lynx on the attack. Holness, turn the through ball. You ask to make that Holmes. Yes, he's got green jerseys all over and Demon kicks it away. Ball will be out. Throw in for Toronto. Spadafina throws it in. To Golan. In the middle, taken away by Delacon for all that. Pass back to Delacon. Brings it up the wing. Now he sneaks it through to Tanner. Moving in deep. Tanner looking for the crossing ball. In the box. To Lasher. Oh, we're out deep. Here's the score. Oh, seen two miss hits on the same play and it was a, a miss hit I think I think it was Mike Kerms on the first time he miss hits it should have buried it in the back of the net and we're gonna see it on a replay just a great run by Delacon he cuts it back and let's see let's see oh no Tanner Tanner's gonna cut it back he's, 
gonna get, and there it is. Curves miss hits, comes out, and so does Yari Alman. Two basically open nets. I mean, open uh, with a goalkeeper was totally caught out of position, and both of them should have really been buried. Fusini down to seeing his first action of the season coming in in the 88th minute, and Mauro De Silva coming out. Fusini, a regular starter for the Rhinos the first two years of the team, and this will be his first action of the season here tonight. He can't make the, it's been tougher in trying to get into the lineup. Long ball inside the box, headed away by Hardy. Pass knocked down and on the wing, intercepted by Fusini, moves up the wing. He looks it over, it's a pass away as he had his foot bump trying to take the kick. Throw in by Tanner. Tanner dropping the ball back. Lucini will make the throw in. Just over two minutes to go in the second half. Flick forward by Steenkamp. Holmes back, watched by Tanner. Holmes puts it out. Throw in for Steenkamp. Long throw in into the middle. Here's all that. Settles it off his chest. Moving it right for the kick. Doesn't get through. Loose ball. Scramble. He shot initially taken by uh, Yari Alnut and then there was a scramble in there and as it was knocked in so I don't know it was oh, no it, they, they called it back no goal I don't know if they called an offside or a foul maybe what it was is a foul because there was a scramble I don't know if we have that on the replay maybe we could see that but uh, it, it's kind of puzzling here we go here we have it Yari Alnut has it he shoots right there and what we're going to do is we're going to get a scramble here and I really the ball was in front of him. I honestly don't see what it was. They didn't get behind the ball or anything. Well, a minute. A strange and a half call. It's a very strange call. It's still 2-1 Rochester. In the middle, kicked away by Schweitzer. Holmes settles it there. And just slip it through the box. And on the near side, picked up by Fusini, drives it out on the near wing, but picked up there by Vindovich of the Lakes. A minute and a half to go. Foot hopper into Einstein drives it and holds on. Yeah. 